Behold, the creationist's nightmare. This little chap, this friendly little chap, is a decapod crustacean. It's a little hermit crab. Here's a slightly larger one. They're called decapods because they have 10 feet, 10 legs. Unlike the ones that you see in the ocean, or perhaps in a marine aquarium, these ones are called Cenobitidae. I'm not quite sure of the pronunciation. They're land hermit crabs. Now with me holding his shell, you can see that he desperately wants to get away, but he won't abandon his shell unless it's the direst of emergencies, because without his shell, he's helpless. Now these crabs, like all crabs, do have an exoskeleton, but their main body is comparatively soft and vulnerable. The shell acts both as armour and as a means to maintain the correct humidity around their body. Now when fully withdrawn into his shell, the crab is almost invulnerable to the majority of predators, his left main claw acting as an armoured gate. None shall pass. You can see how well the claw blocks the entrance to the shell. And as this chap decides to come out, you can also see how well all his legs fit in that spiralling shell because of his asymmetric body. Now, as I mentioned, these have an exoskeleton. That doesn't grow. So from time to time, the crab has to find a safe location, exit his shell, molt his entire outer layers, and then get back in his shell. Because during that time, his body is entirely soft until the new exoskeleton hardens. I found a suitable looking shell and placed it where I'd seen plenty of crabs earlier in the day. Within about 30 minutes, a whole bunch of crabs were checking it out to see if it would make a good home. They need to make sure it's not too big, not too small, that it's the right shape, etc. Now for three of these crabs, that shell is way too big. But for the fourth one, he's really investigating. It could be a possible fit. The really interesting thing is, if it's just a bit too big, he won't just give up and walk away. He'll wait. He'll wait until a more suitable crab comes along because when that crab vacates his shell, he should be able to move into it. Sometimes you can get a queue of up to 20 crabs, each hanging on to a slightly larger shell crab in the hope that they can all upsize. On this occasion, they all gave up and wandered off. It'll be interesting to see if the shell's still there in a few hours time. Now going back to the crabs I collected, Here's a larger one still. Quite amazing. But so is their life cycle. They start off hatching from eggs in the ocean. They spend their first period of life as planktonic life forms, going through several zoeal stages until eventually they become a megalopa. During this time, their body starts off symmetrical, but it develops and becomes asymmetrical. At this point, they grab a gastropod shell and migrate from the ocean out onto the land. At this point, they become land-based creatures. They can't return to the ocean, other than going to the water's edge looking for shells and a female going into the water briefly just to disperse her eggs. But more than a few minutes in water and they drown. So these guys are scavengers, eating fruit, bugs, in fact, almost anything that they can find and live in the leaf litter. Here, I decided to treat them by giving them a plum. They were very happy. So why am I showing you all this stuff about hermit crabs? Why do I call it the creationist's nightmare? With the Genesis account, the world and the universe was created in seven days. Now, I'm not sure which day hermit crabs would have been created on whether they count as fish or animals or or what but why would god create an animal that hatches from an egg in the ocean has to go through several planktonic forms changing all the time its body shape having to change from symmetrical to asymmetrical having to find a shell then having to leave the ocean and migrate to the land never being able to return to the ocean for fear of drowning. That is to say nothing of Noah and the flood myth. 
how would hermit crabs travel from little tropical islands across the ocean that they can't swim in, that they drown in, across the land, across rivers, frequently having to rehome themselves in larger shells which are only found at the seashore? How does that work? Evolution has an explanation for guys like this amazingly large fellow. I can't see that the Bible has. I would like creationists please to explain the hermit crab and all these questions I've raised. It makes no sense to me that God would create a creature that absolutely requires the empty shell of other dead creatures to live in, to end up like this fellow.